Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Scandal Season 5, Episode 10. We starting off with Olivia. She is at home when she gets a knock on the door from Huck. He like, okay, why don't you let me in? What's going on? Who's in there? Are you safe? She's like, I'm good. Like, what's going on? He said, there's a new client. And she's like, you couldn't call me on the phone? He's like, this is not the kind of client that you call on the phone. This is like the head of the NSA. So she gets to the office. New client, her name is Diane Peters. She is the head of the NSA and her home computer has gotten like hacked into. Now she is like all about computers. She know computers. Her com home computer was supposed to be unhackable but somehow somebody can hack into it. And you're not supposed to bring your work home with you but you know people still do that. So they're trying to figure out how did, was somebody able to not even be in her house, hack into her computer and take these certain files. The file was Mercury. Mercury is all about like spying on people. Basically that's what it is. And she was like, I don't know how anybody could have done this. All I know is the computer, I mean, the cameras that are set up in my house that was on, that was looking at my computer saw that like my computer turned on by itself and these files were put to a folder and they now they gone. Like before I could do anything, everything was gone. So they like, who do you think would have, like, want to take these files? And she's like, I don't know. And it's like, what about your new boyfriend? Because she didn't set up to where her, I guess her boyfriend is her common-law spouse. She set up that with her job. And she's like, no, nah, he wouldn't do that. But he's like, he's a, pro pro he's a program developer. Like, this is right up his alley. And she's like, before I got with him when we first started dating, before I even like brought him into my home, I did a thorough background check on him. I know what age he lost his first tooth. I know where his mom and daddy was when they first got together. I know where his great granny great granddaddy were on his first day of first grade. So I know all about this man and I, I it's not in him. I like I said, I did my thorough background check on this man so it can't be him. It gotta be somebody else. But Olivia and Tim like, yeah, it was definitely the boyfriend. She just in denial right now. So a reporter at the White House, like, Abby, how come you not ask me any questions? It's my job. She's like, okay, remember you was up there saying some stuff about the president? That's why I'm not asking you any questions. He's like, man, I got some good information. Like, let's, let me know. Hey, you know about this Mercury Project? And, you know, Abby, she kept it straight fast. She's like, yeah, I know about it. What about it? It's like, yeah, I heard that, you know, the posting got a hold of some stuff. You know, what's going on? She's like, we didn't already got this handled. So she rushes over to fist like, we in trouble because Mercury didn't got into somebody's hand and they trying to contact the post if this happens all these diplomats and all these people we've been spying on they're gonna be they're not gonna be happy about this so he says to jake on the job like i need you to find this dude before he releases this in any of this information to the public because we can't be having this on our hand meanwhile queen and marcus is like okay we didn't got a ping on this phone let's go to this house so they go to this house to look for dude and jake is there and he's like oh yeah he was gone before i got here and like his phone is just sitting here so ain't nothing we can do here so we just gonna have to figure out where he's at now he basically then went ghost and now we don't know where he at so abby goes to cyrus because she about to lose it now, not only is she like working for the president but he be calling four five times a night three four in the morning while she trying to sleep she's like i'm used to sleeping on like four hours of sleep but like he trying to get it down to three we not only talk about what's going on in politics and what he gonna be doing the next day but he want to know want me to tell him how the the um season the loss how did that end how did the series how did that end like fritz need a friend and but like cyrus tells her like you are his work wife he used to have Olivia to talk to about certain things. She's not here no more. Him and Millie are not together no more. He don't trust me no more. So you didn't expect saying she's like, well, I'm all about doing my job. But, you know, talking about different TV shows and me trying to catch him up on shows that been off for you four, five, six years. I can't really be doing that. He's like, um, this is what you're going to have to do. I don't know what to say, Abby. Let you his work wife. You know, Fitz don't know how to, you know deal with things in the world without somebody to talk to can't talk to baby jerry because he a baby his other kids well the other daughter she grown well not she she's not grown but you know she in that teenage space so like you just gonna have to like maybe we can get fits a little friend like somebody he can talk to just about tv shows the where he ain't gotta bring my tail into it 
So Olivia tells Diane that hey, your boyfriend's phone did call the post. I'm sorry to take this, but she's like, and the job she has, most men are threatened out of this job because this is a high-ranking job, and like her boyfriend like saw the woman you know behind the job. And she thought she really found somebody good, but she know these people in government, all these good old boys, is going to find a reason like, hey, there should be no other woman that should take this position because clearly they don't know how to act. She's like, I'm standing up for women right now. I think another woman should be able to take this job, but they're not going to look at it like this. Like, I need this, we need this one, one for women because I know good and doggone well, it ain't going to be nothing but men taking this position. Like, it's bad enough that I didn't pick the wrong dude, even though I did a thorough backtrack background check on this man but i know they're gonna look at these women they put their motion in his hands they wouldn't seeing things clearly and now government secrets is put out there into the world so queen is at home sleeping in the bed and her boyfriend is steady like talking to her about the case and she's like i'm trying to sleep don't mess with me like queen i'm here for you on that one because don't wake me up if i'm sleeping if it is not an emergency and somebody's not hurt and or dead I'm just let me sleep. You can tell me in the morning. He's like, this don't seem right. He's like, you looked into his emails and all his emails was like normal. Like, he don't seem like the kind of person that he ain't got no plane tickets to nowhere else. Like, he seemed like a normal dude. He don't seem like somebody, like a spy. And Quill's like, you know what? You know what? You, you're right. So, Olivia and the crew, they go to that house where his phone was at. And Liv's like, okay, tell me where Jay came from. So, they go to the kitchen and they find boyfriend dead in the refrigerator with a bullet hole in his head. So she's like, okay, I know who did this. This got Jake's name written all over it. So she calls Abby like, oh, Abby, um, who is like next in line to take, you know, Diane Peters' place? Who is it? None other than Jake. Now it's like, this got Daddy Pope written all over it. So meanwhile, while this is going on, Jake is over there at the White House, you know, offended to get to his official title as head of the NSA. So, you know, this is going to make Daddy Pope real happy because now he got the inside inside. He thought he had that with Olivia, but Olivia, you know, she stopped, you know, going with the president. So now his son, as he liked to say, is, is now on the inside. And this is going to make him happy. So Olivia carries herself over to Daddy Pope's house like, okay, what is good, Jay? Like, I know you killed dude, but... He's like, it was for the greater good. He's sitting there eating whatever he was eating. And Daddy Pope goes on one of his monologues about this was the greater good of the world. We had to take out one. She couldn't see clearly. There could have been with a drag and with fire coming out of it. My son is raising to power. I thought it was going to be you in the White House. But you misplaced that step and you did not do that. You should have been in the White House. I was like, really? You wanted her to be in the White House because this was power? I mean, she wasn't the president or nothing. But, like, I kind of see where you're going. But, like, this whole, like, you know, Daddy Pope, his, like, logic on things don't really make sense. It's always for the greater good. But, like, you didn't make, kill this man, this innocent man. This woman who was doing a good job for what, so you can like have some power in like the government, so you can know these secrets. Okay, so that was the gist that went on. Oh yeah, Jake and Olivia they like kind of got back together, but I don't think that's gonna happen no more after she didn't realize he's back to his killing ways and killing the innocent people for no reason at all. So yeah, that was the gist of it on. If I left anything out, by all means leave a comment or video response. And like I always want to thank my subscribers and the people watching the videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.